Hey everyone, this is your girl Jenna, and today we are going to talk about a story um, that comes from New York, and a young woman was found dismembered in her apartment building, and her name is Daisha Johnson. Okay. So before we get started, make sure you what? Thumbs up this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you leave comments, guys, okay? I would love to know how you guys feel about um, these stories and things like that. So yes, make sure you comment, like, share, and subscribe. And turn on all of your notifications so you can get notified when we upload a video. So I saw this story uh, come across my desk and I was thinking, you know, should I talk about it or not? Um, apparently this young lady, she was in uh, a domestic violence relationship and we all know how that goes, guys. And um, apparently she, uh, a lot of people knew about her and they hadn't heard from her in a while so they had um people go to her apartment and they were you know basically smelling uh something odd a foul smell from her apartment and they went there and something horrible uh happened or they found something horrible the family of the domestic violence victim who was dismembered in her brooklyn apartment recalled the young woman as a loving aspiring teacher as they questioned why the building staff didn't do more to protect her. Which is, um, you know, a good question because first of all, you would think because she's in a uh, public building, uh, things could have been, you know, uh, prevented. They, a lot of people who actually uh, were interviewed during this case, they said that they would hear them um, argue and everything and nothing was done um why the building staff didn't do more for her the aunt of Daisha Johnson who was 22 criticized the security guards guards at the Linwood Street apartment building for not prohibiting her abusive boyfriend from entering the location okay so basically this apartment is where you have to check in and they knew a lot of people knew about the, um, their relationship being uh, sketchy and they still allowed him to uh, go within the building. Witnesses saw him hitting her in the hallways and the authorities were called numerous times according to neighbors. You know, I'm, I don't know if you guys are watching the series Dahmer, <laughs> um, but if, I mean, other than the, the it, it's very, it's horrible. I, I really couldn't get through it. I only got to like episode four, but for what I understand is the police or the authorities were well involved in knowing what Dahmer was doing and he still got away with it. Um, guys, I, you know, this is, you know, when I'm coming across these, different stories you know some stories people are calling the police and the police are not um on their game because the thing about it is they can only do stuff if they see it like once this happened it's no prevention you know i wish there was a place where you know there's a median like the person doesn't have to be no longer living for something to be done. Like if, if, if we're hearing screams, if we're hearing and witnessing someone being blatantly um, physically abused, I should be able to tell the cops that or the, the police that, and they should be able to do some things to prevent what this story is actually gonna reveal. They dropped the ball here, the aunt who declined to share her name. Okay, Johnson also had an active restraining order. Okay, active restraining order against her boyfriend and he'd previously been arrested for coming to the apartment back in March. Okay, so by the way, guys, this just happened a few days ago, literally like two days ago, this happened. Okay. Okay, so he had a restraining order and he was uh, basically ordered to pick up his belongings 
and, and things of that nature. Okay, let me go on. I'm, I'm reading this, guys. I read on my, my shows, guys. There's no... <laughs> you know, I could do voiceovers, but I mean, sometimes I don't like doing voiceovers. But yeah, I mean, everybody reads. No possible way I can know this story um, by heart. The family of the domestic violence victim um, is looking basically to release the picture of the suspect. So let me show you guys um, who he is because... This is her boyfriend. Let's see if I can. Yeah, this is him. Okay, so basically the thumbnail, guys. I'll, you know, I would have had that photo in the thumbnail. Okay, so they know their tenants. They opened the door for him. Okay, the aunt added. She didn't have no other boyfriend. They didn't do enough. They could have prevented him from coming in there. Yeah, I mean, it's not like she had her own apartment. It's not like she lived by herself. I mean, ha you, you know, she lived in a whole building that needed to be checked in, uh, ID and all of that for them to go upstairs. And so, yeah, I agree with the aunt. Like, if you, and, and especially if you knew that um, she was being uh, mistreated physically, there's no reason why they should have let him in. Not to mention, there's no reason why they shouldn't have checked on her sooner. But we'll get to that. She didn't have no other boyfriend. They didn't do enough. They could have prevented him from coming in there. Their security, they're trained to put somebody down. There's always a way to stop him from coming in. Johnson's aunt said that she asked the building security guards on Wednesday to conduct a wellness check after her phone had been off. So she was trying to call her niece and her niece was not answering. So she asked them to do a wellness check. Mind you, during this time, the neighbors later on will say that they actually had a, you know, smelled a foul odor coming from her apartment. And I'm sure during this time, people heard screams, they heard, you know, fighting and all of that. Because I'm sure he couldn't have done what he did without people hearing it and nobody said a thing. That's the thing about domestic disputes and domestic violence. A lot of people feel like, oh, I... You know, I'm not going to um, get involved in a couple's matter. Okay? I remember one day my husband and I, um, I would not suggest you guys do that. But that was just a good Samaritan. I was at the time, no fear. We were out. We At the time, we were like doing, this was before Uber and all the other stuff that, you know, Lyft and all the car. We, we, we drove a cab. And I would never let my husband drive alone so we was riding up a street and we saw this woman um and her boyfriend they were fighting i mean arguing fighting and all that and i was like oh my gosh and we actually gave her a ride home you know didn't know this lady from a can of paint things could have went left but god was there and covered us you know i just didn't like to see that and i've seen that around my neighborhood i've seen you know um people fighting i mean arguing fussing and fighting and women going back and forth because women we can be catty we can we can you know be a force to be working with too we try to you know go toe to toe with these men and we're, we're no it, that's not good if you have to be aggressive back and you have to really defend yourself it's not worth it but you know i looked out the window and i saw it and you know i'm one of those people who would you know, whatever, you know what I mean? I would try to get help. Um, but I can understand why people would be scared because you don't want that kind of energy coming back to you because you don't know who these people are. So I get it, you know. Um, but if this somebody's, you know, looking at this, protect yourself, of course. But if you see, 
you know, if you hear things and, and be smart enough where, you know, you can anonymously call, you can do little things to kind of like try to help that person because when they're in that situation, their mind isn't going right. Like we could, we could be on the outside looking in and say, I would never go through that. I don't know why she's going through that. I don't know why she's accepting that. We could all do that. But realistically, when you're in that situation, your mind is in literally a different place and you're not able to make logical decisions. Um, let me go. Okay, so she basically asked the security guards to do a wellness check. When the when they arrived, the woman's boyfriend and another man were in the unit and refused to let the guards in. The guards left the call. Um, the guards left and called the authorities. And in the meantime, the two men managed to slip away. So let me get this straight. They went to the apartment. There were two fellas in there, and I'm sure they were hit with an odor because neighbors said that they smelled an odor. And within the time of them calling the authorities, the men got away. Hmm. The next thing I hear, a detective calls me and tells me that it is a crime scene now. They let them just walk out after the wellness check. There's a 24-hour security in the uh, security officer, I guess, in the building. Authorities entered the unit and found a scene that neighbors described as being from a horror movie. With the woman's body in two suitcases. Here again, I'm a spiritual person. I come from a spiritual base in all of my videos. Evil. Evil, evil, evil. People are evil. This is the devil. This is not normal. This is not right. You would never do this to somebody if you are in a different mindset. If you are covered with God's love and you know what's up, you would never do this. I do not like hearing about that because what type of person would do that? The woman's body was in two suitcases. Her bathtub, her bathtub was stained with bodily fluids and it was a meat cleaver nearby. At the time of Johnson's tragic demise, the young woman had been working hard to get her life together and was well on her way, her aunt said. Daisha was a loving, full of life young lady. She was working at Macy's and she wanted to finish school. She wanted to be a teacher. She was in school, she was working, she was well-loved, and this is just horrible. She loved her sister, she loved her mother. She was a pretty girl. It's just sad that her life was unfortunately cut short. Johnson was a client of Housing Plus, a nonprofit group that provides supportive and stable housing to vulnerable women, such as domestic violent uh, victims, people with criminal histories and women who suffer from mental wellness um, issues. So this was a building that, you know, um, her being, I guess, a person who was in a bad relationship and whatever else was going on, this was funded by them. And it's funny because she's in this building and it's supposed to protect her, give her like a new leash, lease, is it lease or leash on life? And she loses her life in a building that is geared towards helping women in domestic uh, violence uh, relationships. The building where Johnson lived is owned by a private company called CNC Apartment Management, which provides on-site security. Housing Plus provides social services to a third of the building's residents to help them get back on their feet. They declined to comment on the situation. The aunt said her niece tried to leave her boyfriend numerous times and as recently as August 16th. So this happened, I think, in, uh, just a few days ago, okay? So I'll be posting this up on my YouTube, guys. So um, I think it happened like two, three days ago, September 23rd, I think, okay? All right, and as recently as August 16th, 
talked about her plans to get away during a dinner party with family. She was happy. She told us, I'm done with him. If she would have told us the full extent of the situation, we, were able, um, we would have been able to help her if we knew more, the aunt said. It's just so sad. She was so skinny. The boy, the boy overpowered her. He was leeching off of her. He was using her kindness. Her mother is terminally ill and she needed a friend. And she thought that he was that friend. Johnson's boyfriend is considered a person of interest in the slang and is currently being sought out by authorities. Okay. So no one at this time has been um, caught in the situation. So he is, you know, the person is still on the run, of course. They know it's the boyfriend because he he's the one who uh, was let in. So it's just a matter of them catching him. You know, I usually put my own commentary in there and I'm going to come off the dome on this one. Okay. Um, here again, you hear that the young lady tried to do, the, do her best to get away from um, him. But sometimes you have to work from the beginning. Before you get with someone, before you become just close with someone, get to know them first. You have to work on self. You know, one thing about the mind is fragile. I'm learning that in my older age. It's very fragile. You get bad news, you go through something, and it affects you. So three things I always say when you are, when you are you know, going through some type of trauma or anything like that. First and foremost, take care of yourself. Get sleep, get plenty of rest, eat, and hydrate. <laughs> That's just coming from your girl who is a holistic practitioner, who is a human being, who is a woman, and who has a lot of um, things on her shoulders. You know, I just recently lost one of my friends. And it is so hard on me. It is so hard. You know, I just got the news uh, literally a few days ago. Right after my wedding anniversary, celebrating 19 years of marriage. And finding out that my friend from college passed away. And she was in my, she was actually a witness at my wedding. And um, it hurt me. And I had to really like tell my husband like I can't keep allowing this outside situation um, that I had no um, control over you know hurt me the way it is you know does like when I heard that it just literally I could I just could feel like something being pulled from me and I had to pray I had to ask God for strength now, luckily, I have a good husband, you know, that I could cry on his shoulder, that I could yell and scream and, and complain, and he, he accepted it, but, you know, he was there for me. But at the end of the day, I had to pull myself together. And so this young lady, you know, I'm just saying, you know, she had issues where her mom, you know, is terminally ill, and, be, and that did something to her. And bad news does something to people. I mean, when you hear someone... You know, when you are threatened to lose someone, like find out somebody is, is, you know, not well. Yes, that would put a damper on your on your being or finding out someone passed away or finding out anything that's negative. Of course, that's going to have a mental drain on you, but you have to stay focused. You have to keep going. Now, don't jump into a situation where things are worse. That's the thing. You know, you can do bad by yourself. We have this, we have the Lord. <laughs> Pray. I don't care if you have a man. I don't care if you have children. I don't care if you have 10 best friends. None of them can do what God does for you. And he is the one that you want to lean on and ask, what's your, what's your next move? Because some people it's, it's out here will feed off of your misery, will feed off of your pain, will feed off of your trauma. They will see a loophole in there to try to use you. That's why when I go through something traumatic, I kind of guard myself. So no one else can see. I'm only sharing this because this is a traumatic story. 
And then let us know that the young lady was going through something because her mother was, was, was ill. And so sometimes when things happen like that, other things can come in because it sees your pain. It sees, you know, idleness. One thing that is getting through, getting me through me losing my, my friend is work, putting my energy, putting that, that energy that I could be putting into negativity, I'm putting into something positive. When I clicked this video today, I did not expect to have that conversation, but I had to get it out because I don't know who else might be going through. So sometimes God gives us certain things, not just for us, but once he gets us through it, or once he is getting us through it, he wants us to put it out there in the, in the atmosphere to help others. That's how he's omnipresent. That's how he's, he's, he's everywhere, because he works through us. So I hope that story helps. Like, I'm going through something. I am, I am, I'm going through it. You know, I'm like, oh. But every day, it, it, it seems to be, you know, healing. It doesn't have to take forever. But always put yourself in a, in a situation where it's going to help you, not hinder you. You don't need anyone else to do that. That is something that you have to do internally. My husband can't even, even do that. We've been together for 20 years. It is my responsibility to go to God to get healed through this traumatic time of my life. Because he can't do that for me. No man can do that. No woman can do that for you. Only God. All right? My prayers and my condolences goes out to this, this family. Um, it's so very unfortunate. When you see things around you, even if you can't physically help, pray. Pray for that person. There's nothing wrong with prayer. Prayer changes things. It's not just for us ourselves. We're supposed to pray for one another. Because that's how we show love to one another. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you what? Thumbs up this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you're following us on all platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and what was it? TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, oh, and YouTube. Yes, make sure you're following us on all platforms. That way you'll be uh, in the know of what's the tea today. Thank you.